All right, we're ready to put some boots on the ground, do some shed hunt. We got Bobby Kendall at the Whitetail Group coming uh, to talk timber with us later this afternoon. We got Hayden and a couple of buddies in town ready to find some sheds. So we're gonna get to walking and hopefully we have a good weekend. Big ones are easy to find. You gotta be a pro to find those. All right, I'm out here with Bobby Kendall today at the Whitetail Group, and we came and marked some trees. We're gonna start this timber project, thicken it up, and hopefully make our hunting a lot better. Yep, that sounds good. Yep, it's all about it's all about having a plan and using that timber, that canvas that we're given to to create something with, and you know. At, Anybody can just cut it and thicken it up, but if there's a, some, a plan, even if it's just one spot that, that you can really, you know, up your odds, it, it's a game changer. Just kind of make them feel a little more secure here. Unpressured with or without logging or doing any type of habitat work, I mean, a, there's just so much structure in here that a big deer is gonna live in here. I mean, it's all south facing next to giant ag, you know, I definitely, definitely log first and then like, especially this point, cause it's relative to your food source. I mean, that'd be where I'd spend effort if you wanted to do any TSI type stuff, all those smaller trees and stuff and get that, that hillside there. And with these trees marked, if they fall down there and those tops go that way, I mean, really we're putting everything coming out this ridge within bow range of that stand. This particular area, we want to hit hard because we're trying to create, you know, one of those type of kill thickets, if you will. If you picture this done, they got a stand that's one of their best stands at the bottom of this south facing point. And then that fence gap is right over there. So when we take all these out, there's gonna be a shot of light coming in here. I would then go in and I would literally draw a line like picture exactly how you'd want a deer coming out of that fence gap and then turning and walking and where you'd want them ending up in front of that stand. And that's the natural line that I would envision. And I'd go in and all these little trees, I would, I would hinge, you know, hinge cut them or whatever. And just you're gonna have all these tops, all this hinge cut and have a very defined line. And this sunlight is gonna give that next south facing ridge a bunch of a shot of light, which is relative to that food plot. But, the theory is when you get this puff of change, this really hard hit, what is it? An eighth of an acre maybe? When you get that, all of a sudden, when he comes through there and he's on the downwind of that, that cedar thicket, when he comes through there, it's just an odd upper that he's gonna use his nose and he's gonna stay on the downwind side on that path of least resistance, scent checking this, and he's gonna end up right in front of that tree stand. So you can use the logging project. This is where I say we select cut the woods with a general like forestry, you know, perspective on how we mark it. But then this is where we would be strategically cutting. I'm always looking at everything as like a risk reward situation, you know. This is obviously the bedding area from the heavens that we all wish we could have south and southeast facing gnarly stuff got a hedgerow on the bottom side so if we think like a deer dominant winds and he's trying to scent check this he's in theory should be on the lower side of it so like he said restouting this fence and and just forcing him to come out where he probably naturally going to want to come out anyway um, as far as a logging project is concerned we have this also south southeast facing hillside with a bunch of, with a canvas of you know marketable uh, cuttable timber so we're going to cut that as hard as we can in the logging project 
And then, you know, these guys probably should follow it up with some TSI in there. I try and tell everybody, like, I, I want to teach you as much as I can about the trees. I want the landowner to be as involved as possible, ask as many questions because the, the more stuff I can teach them, the more things we can talk about, the less questions there are, uh, the less room there is for questions later because the logging project happens super fast. Oh yeah. A lot of change, you know, it can be hard to see your, your farm change so much. A lot of hunters though love, love seeing the change. So we're gonna try and document as much as we can for this whole project. Uh, I think they're gonna come out here this summer and log it in July and August and so we'll be filming part of that and then we're going to tie this in to Max and I's hunt out here this fall and hopefully we knock down some big bucks and uh, using these logging strategies to increase our odds and draw bigger deer in here. Yep. And we, we might even be here earlier than July but a, a strategy of logging on a farm like this where the goals are our deer cover is if we cut these trees when the leaves are on these white oaks they the leaves will basically just shrivel up and turn brown and they'll stay on those tops for several years so you'll you'll get twice the bang for your buck as far as security big deal for for a hunter wanting to do a project I'm gonna do some shed hunting today. It is, what is it? It's close to the end of February. Max found one yesterday. Nate and I found zero, so hopefully we get on the board today. Not chewed up or anything? It's a buck we call a tuning fork. Um, pretty sure Max found his other side a couple weeks ago. Pretty stoked to have, uh, have beat him 2 1. And I was just walking in the CRP and I was finding deer hair. Just popped up to the edge here and I see a really good antler. Zigzagging and popped out, and this thing was just sitting right there when you flew the drone over me. <laughs> well, this is a buck we were hoping that showed up, and we got a shot at this year. Oh, a big fiber. Yeah. yeah. Be even cooler next year. All right, we had some luck finding some sheds this morning, so we're going to go burn this Egyptian weed off, and we have a little bit of uh, foxtail and switchgrass that we're going to burn off, and then we're going to frost seed some more switchgrass into that, and then we're going to go help the neighbor burn all of their CRP. It's going to be a lot, so a lot of flames. It'll be fun. <laughs> And he found the other side to Frodo, which is a buck I found yesterday. Shed two, so we're gonna go check them out. 